what happens to my hormones in postmenopause? I get asked this question on a regular basis. So we know that during the perimenopause and menopause, our hormones can fluctuate quite dramatically. And this fluctuation can give rise to symptoms. It can put a stress on our body. It can affect our general health. And a lot of people think that post-menopause, your hormones just completely disappeared and you don't have any left at all. So today I'm going to talk about what really happens to your hormones at this particular time. So we know that estrogen levels decrease during the perimenopause and menopause and postmenopausal, they eventually get to what's called a lower base level. So they are still there. And we know that our ovaries can still make small amounts of estrogen. Our adrenals can make small amounts of estrogen. Our fat levels can produce small amounts of estrogen. And really importantly, we can get some kind of phytoestrogens from certain foods that we eat on a regular basis. So we can still have quite a nice little level of estrogen hanging around to help us feel um, still quite good. We have progesterone, now that's completely different. Progesterone is produced by the ovaries and it's more to do with supporting the, the lining of the womb in, in the latter part of the cycle. So when our ovaries start to wind down, the production of progesterone winds down too, and it gets to a really low level post-menopause, but it can still be there. Testosterone, on the other hand, for most of us, tends to be a slow burner. It decreases a lot more gradually. We tend not to get the, the sudden drops in, in the perimenopause and menopause. Again, our ovaries and our adrenals can produce small amounts of testosterone on a regular basis. And this just then tends to decrease over time as we age. We have other hormones called follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. And these very often increase in relationship to estrogen and progesterone decreasing. So when our ovaries are producing less estrogen, the body kind of goes into a panic. We need more, we need more. So more and more of the luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone are produced to try and rev everything up again. Um, and that's one of the reasons if you go and get a test done, if your follicle stimulating hormone is really high, that's an indication that your estrogen is really low. And that can just um, show that you're actually in late menopause or actually post menopause. Cortisol, which I've talked about just recently, is very often increased. The production increases post menopause because we face other forms of, of stress. If we're anxious, if, if we're finding life a little bit tough, then our nervous system kicks in and cortisol rises. Insulin is another hormone that can rise post menopause and we can become much more vulnerable to fluctuation blood sugar level and also either pre-diabetes or diabetes itself. So this is one just to bear in mind um, during the, the post-menopause, especially if you start to put weight on quite quickly and you really can't lose it. So how do you sort this? It's just the usual things that I talk about on a weekly basis. We need to have a good diet. We need to support our body in every way we can. So that's nutritionally, it's also rest and relaxation. We don't want that cortisol to rise. And it's about taking sensible exercise, not going too mad with that. Phytoestrogen foods, really, really important. As I mentioned before, you can look at taking a phytoestrogen supplement, um, which is something I'm still doing. I find it uh, really, really helpful. Remember the water and try and get some good sleep. So I hope you found this helpful. Again, if you've had any issues, if you have any more questions, the postmenopause can be quite, quite a mysterious place to be. So if you have any questions, please ask. If any of you have done things to make yourself feel better postmenopause, please share them. You know I love to read all your stories. Have a lovely week and I'll see you soon.